So for this next video in the playlist on calculus, we're going to grow up a little bit, only a little bit. We're now going to go to multivariable calculus and we're going to discuss directional derivatives. And what we're going to aim to see in this video is why the directional derivative in the direction of the unit vector u for a function f which is dependent on two variables, x and y, is given by this formula here, where we have the partial derivative of f with respect to x times the component of the unit vector in the x direction plus the partial derivative of f with respect to y times the component of the unit vector in the y direction. Now note there are a huge number of different uh, notations that people use for directional derivatives. This is the notation that we're going to use in this video. Now for the basis of this video, we're just going to study a real valued function of two real variables. However, the logic that underpins the derivation of this formula is the same that you would use if you wanted to uh, work it out for a function of three real variables or a function of four real variables, etc. So we're imagining that we've got some differentiable function f of x, y, which is a real valued function. So it gives you a real number of two real variables. So you have to put in the value of x and the value of y, and it, then it spits out a real number. We can then plot a graph of that function, which is what I've done here. So all the inputs are points on the two-dimensional plane, the x-y plane, which is what we've got here, so x and y here. And then we're using the z-axis to plot the value of our function f of x-y, and we'll get some two-dimensional surface like so. Now I'm going to assume that you know about partial derivatives. So if you take any point on the plane x and y, and you want to know what the derivative of this function f of x, y is in the direction of x, we know that is equal to the partial derivative of f with respect to x. And remember what that means is if you go forward an amount in the x direction, and then imagine taking the gradient of the secant line between the point at the original point x, y, and then this new point which where you've moved forward by an amount delta x, and then you take the limit of the gradient of that secant line as that change in x converges on zero, that is what we mean by the partial derivative in the direction of x. And similarly, in the direction of y, the, de the derivative is going to be equal to the partial derivative of f with respect to y. When we're asking about directional derivatives, what we now want to say is, well, those were just two directions, but there are loads of other directions. We could go in any direction within the two-dimensional plane, so if we take an arbitrary vector u, which is a unit vector in some direction, and we want to know what the derivative of our function is in that direction, how do we work it out? That's what we mean by the directional derivative of f in the direction of u. So let's try and work this out then. So we want to take the derivative of the function f of x, y in the direction of this vector u. So what do we actually mean by the derivative? So what we want to imagine doing is going forward from a point x, y, which we've shown in blue here, to some new point where we get to that new point by going forward some amount in the direction of this vector u. So we've gone forward along this yellow line, which is obviously along the vector u, to this new point here. And then what we want to do is compare the value of the function at the original point, shown here in blue. So here is the value of the function at the original point to the value of the function at this new point shown in green. So we want to find out what is the change in the value of the function and then we want to divide that by the length of this yellow line, how much we have moved in the domain. And then we'll get the gradient then of that secant line connecting this blue point to this green point. And then the derivative in the direction of the vector u is going to be the limit of the gradients of these secant lines as you make this yellow line shorter and shorter and shorter, bringing the green point closer and closer and closer to blue so that you're effectively forming a tangent line to the surface in the direction of the vector u. That is what we mean by the derivative. So how do we do that? Well, here we have our unit vector u, 
which has x component which we're calling u1 and y component which we're calling u2, we want to go forward an amount in the direction of this vector, so we just need to scale this vector. So let's create a new value which we'll call a, which is going to be a real number, and then if we consider what a times u is equal to, it's just going to equal a u1 a u2, and now we can set a equal to whatever we like. We can imagine making it 2, which would double the unit vector and make it of length 2. But we could also imagine making it smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, letting a converge to 0. And that would then be bringing this green point closer and closer to blue. So we can imagine going forward an amount in the x plane equal to this a times our unit vector u and seeing what the gradient of the secant line is going to be, and then we could let a converge to zero and see what the limit is going to be. So if we move forward from a point x, y, an amount a times u, then we'll get to a new point which will be x plus a u1, y plus a u2, and then the change in the value of the function is just going to equal f evaluated at this new point, which is this value up here of this green point. So that's going to be f at x plus a u1, y plus a u2. Take away the value of the function at the original point, which is just f of x, y. And then we just need to divide that change in the value of the function by how much we're changing in the x, y plane. Well, the length of that a u vector is just equal to a because u has length equal to 1. It was a unit vector, remember, so when you scale it by a, its length just becomes equal to a. So we want to divide that by a, and then that is going to give the gradient of that secant line that you form by connecting this blue point to this green point when you've moved forward in the xy plane by this amount a u. And now what we want to do is take the limit as a approaches zero, which is the limit of these secant lines as that change in the xy plane gets smaller and smaller and smaller. A great trick then now. So remember, we are trying to get a formula for the directional derivative in terms of the partial derivatives. So that means that we are trying to change this into things that are going to be within the limit that are going to become the partial derivatives in the limit as a approaches zero. So to do that, we're actually going to make this expression more complicated by subtracting something off and then straight away adding it back again so that we haven't changed the expression. So let me show you what I mean. So here we have our bit here, but now we have this new thing that I've put in here. So we've got minus f evaluated at x plus a u1 y. And then we've added that thing straight back on again. So we've got plus f at x plus a u1 y. And then we've got our minus f of x y, which came from here. And then the whole thing is divided by a, but I've now split it into these two separate terms. I've split the fraction into two separate terms, which I'm allowed to do so that we've got this piece plus this piece. And you'll notice that you could combine this back into one fraction, cancel this with this, and it will become back equal to this. The reason I've made this more complicated into this is because these things we're going to be able to alter slightly more, and then in the limit as a approaches zero, they're going to become partial derivatives. So this bit here is almost the partial derivative of f with respect to y, evaluated at the point x plus a u1 y. The reason being, if you look at this, this is of the form of a derivative. It's the form of the gradient of a secant line. And it's the gradient if you start at the point x plus a u1 y and you go forward in the y direction and amount a u2 to this new point x plus a u1 y plus a u2, then you've got the change in f, and you've almost got it divided by the change in the xy plane. However, that's why it slightly misses off on being this. 
what you need to do is actually divide through by AU2, the amount that you've changed in the XY plane. Now we can correct that luckily, we can multiply top and bottom by U2, which is what we've done here. So we've multiplied the bottom by U2 and we've got U2 up there. So now we know that this thing is going to become equal to the partial derivative of F with respect to Y, evaluated at this point X plus AU1 Y. Similarly, this thing down here, again, this is very, very hopeful. This looks like it's the partial derivative of f with respect to x, because you start at this point x, y, and you go forward to the point x plus a u1, y, and you're seeing the change in the value of the function f, and then you're almost dividing it through by how much you've changed in the x, y plane, but you haven't quite done it right. We've changed by an amount a u1, so again we need to multiply top and bottom by u1 here, and that's what we've got here. So now this thing is going to become, in the limit as a approaches 0, the partial derivative of f with respect to x evaluated at x, y. So now in our new corrected expression, this thing here is indeed going to become, in the limit as a approaches 0, equal to the partial derivative of f with respect to y, evaluated not quite at x, y, but instead evaluated at this point, x plus a u 1 y. However, in the limit as a approaches 0, a is going to 0 here, so this tiny bit becomes inconsequential, and therefore this actually becomes equal to the partial derivative of f with respect to y, evaluated at our original point, x, y. So we can drop worrying about the fact that it's evaluated at this slightly different point, because in the limit as a approaches 0, that difference becomes uh, insignificant. It becomes infinitesimal. So this becomes equal to the partial derivative of f with respect to y, evaluated at our point x, y, but we're no longer writing that because it's no longer necessary because everything's evaluated at that point x, y. And then it's multiplied by u2, the uh, component of our unit vector in the y direction. And then looking at this part here, this is now in the limit as a approaches 0 going to become equal to the partial derivative of f with respect to x evaluated at x, y. And again, we're dropping the evaluated at x, y because, of course, it's evaluated at x, y. Uh, and then multiplied by u1. So here now is the expression for the directional derivative of our function f in the direction of u. Now, there's this very powerful concept in multivariable calculus called the gradient vector, which we write nabla upside down triangle. It's a Greek symbol, nabla f, and it is going to be a vector, so I put the vector symbol on top, and it's defined to be equal to the vector where the x component is equal to the partial derivative of the function with respect to x, and the y component is the partial derivative of the function with respect to y. If we were talking about a function of more real variables, 3, 4, 5, etc., you just go on. So the uh, z component would be del f, del z, etc. For four components, obviously, you'd need to adopt a different notation rather than the x, y, z notation. Now, with the use of this concept of the gradient vector, then we can write this formula for the directional derivative of the function f in the direction of u as it's equal to this gradient vector dot producted with the unit vector. So if you want to know what the derivative of the function in the direction of u is, all you need to do is dot product your vector u with this gradient vector.